I'm Scott Al Miller. It's the 6th of January, 2024. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, I want to talk about that sense of community that you can get in a place like Nicaragua. This is something that occurred to me last night while I was driving in the car. I took Paul to the airport in Managua. I had some time to myself in the car and had some thoughts that I really wanted to share with you guys about what uh, I really have as a, as a sense of feeling that uh, I have kind of have had developed uh, in myself since living in Nicaragua over the last several years. And it's something that actually hit me quite early. Uh, it didn't take all that time to develop, but uh, it's something that we really don't articulate very much. And I really don't know how many people are affected by this. So I'm really interested in your comments as well. We're gonna get to that on today's show. Today we're filming in the afternoon in the Plaza Sutiava. This is the main city square for the Barrio Sutiava, which is the indigenous community on the west side of the city of Leon. In western Nicaragua, you can see the uh, Iglesia Sutiava here behind me, and I'm on the main square. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it here. But so often this plaza is filled with like a circus or a carnival or some other major event. And so it's it's actually not that often that it's empty. I was driving by and saw that it was empty and I'm, I'm like, I have to come out and do some filming because I can go months at a time uh, without having it be open. And sometimes I come out here and film uh, for you guys like I did with Erica not too long ago. And we filmed in this area while the carnival was going on, but of course it looks completely different. And now it looks so open and beautiful and peaceful. And there's a few people milling about. And of course there's schools here and the cultural center Center, which I really want to film very soon for you guys and I'm gonna show it uh, in just a little bit but it's right in front of me I'm, I'm looking into it they've got it open I can see they've got stuff going on and there's some people lined up there are some shops that do things here so it's it's not a, a bustling area at this time of the afternoon but there are people all over I hear voices everywhere uh, this is a, a hospital uh, over on this side I don't think you can really see it maybe just a little bit over there there are some restaurants there's always some food trucks here when we first moved here they weren't there uh, all the time only for events but now there's some that are just permanently there so you can see them behind me and uh, around the corner as well so there's always some food always some stuff going on there's some restaurants on the side streets and I really haven't done that much walking around this plaza either on the show at least so that's something that I want to do on the on the soon side too because I, I love Sutiava and I live in Sutiava for those who don't know um, but this is a different part of the barrio than I live in and while I come here quite often I don't explore like in the concentric circles around uh, this particular spot and I've never done the museum. So I really want to get to those things. All of that, not really what today's show is about. I want to talk to you, uh, well, I want to start with a little bit of my own history because I think it gives you uh, a little bit of perspective on who I am and what I'm kind of looking for in life. So I was born in Western New York. I grew up on a farm uh, about an hour outside of Rochester or Buffalo, New York. Uh, they're not one place with two names, two cities. I was about an hour from either. And in, in growing up in that area, something that always uh, struck me a lot is it was a very lonely life. I was an only child. Uh, we didn't really know neighbors. We weren't really the active parts of the community. My father worked up in Rochester a very long way away. Uh, so that we, that he was, you know, not spending his time in the local community. It wasn't like he worked in a local shop and, and interacted with people. My mother was the town clerk, but people would come to the house and mostly it was just government interactions. It wasn't super social uh, per se. And uh, someone's got a saw running behind me. Hopefully that's not too bad. You know, and, and we had moved to the area. My parents were both from Ohio and they had lived in Rochester until I was born and then moved out to the country. And all that kind of came together to, in some ways, create a very isolated or lonely kind of general existence um, living out there. And that's, it sounds more negative than it is, but uh, the point being that it was uh, a sense of being disconnected from place. I never at any point in my life had the feeling that Western New York was a place where I really felt like I belonged. Of course it was home and nothing will ever feel like it to me, no matter where I live, what I do in my life, Western New York will always be special in a lot of ways. And I really love that part of the world. Western New York was amazing. I'm at least turning around so that the saw sound is coming from behind the microphone instead of in front of it. Maybe that'll make it a little bit better. Still the Iglesia Sutiava. So growing up in Western New York was amazing. I love the area, the wine country, the, the food, the people are wonderful. And I never felt unwelcome. It's not the same thing, but I never felt like it was my place. I never felt like I really belonged there. 
And I'm sure that there were many factors to this, but definitely having a disconnection. Most people, where you, when you grow up in a small town, especially in a very rural area, uh, you normally have a lot of family who also grew up there, and there's all these familial connections uh, that, that are very deeply rooted and go back generations. Uh, and, and growing up in a very rural area, um, and especially going to a very private school that was very small and, and quite far away uh, from where I lived, all that really contributed to, to this sense of, of lacking the connections that a lot, a lot of other people did to the local community. So that's always been something um, that I feel I've really looked for in my life as I've, uh, I've moved a lot. And I think that also created a lack of sense of uh, home to me internally. Like uh, when I think of my, my childhood home that we had when I was very young from age zero to uh, eight, I don't really think of that as my home so much. I remember it and it's it's got fond memories, but it didn't feel uh, like a place that I was really particularly connected to. And even I remember my early memories, lots of parts of the house felt like foreign places to me. Uh, so I, I think that that gave me a lot of um, ease in moving a lot. And as I became an adult, I ended up moving roughly every nine months uh, for the majority of my life. I was just constantly on the move, whether I was renting or, or buying a house, whether it was work related or just interested in making a change, I would constantly end up moving and I was never stable for a long period of time. Um, most people when they're that, those ages will at least become stable at university housing. Um, I never went uh, more than six months in a single place. Um, most people end up renting an apartment that they keep for a number of years. They end up living in a, in a neighborhood uh, and move from place to place and I did none of that. My, uh, my longest rental for my entire uh, ages under probably 40 was probably something like a year and a half like absolutely crazy just how little physical stability my housing situations had over the years so that's something that uh, I never really thought about like what would contribute to that and why I might be like that but it was um, certainly different than most people and I think that some of that childhood growing up where I was so disconnected from the place I grew up in made it much easier for me to not feel a need to be connected to other places but it is something that I've always sought when I was in Europe in 2012 I was there with my family and we just happened to be in Hallstatt, Austria, which is kind of inconsequential to the story. But I remember being there late at night, uh, Dominica and the kids had gone to bed, and I was out running some errand. I was probably picking up food late at night or something, and I was walking along the lakefront there, which is very remote. If you if you know Hallstatt or you could look it up on a map, uh, you'll recognize the pictures of it immediately. It's it's so well, it's so iconic now after Rick Steves discovered it and shared it with the world. It's it's like the picture of Austria now. Uh, but I was walking along the lake back before all the tourists were there, and it was uh, so quiet and so dark, and there were no people about, and it was so isolated. And you're in the mountains, you're on a, a lake, and you can't even get to the town without taking a, a ferry from the other side of the lake. So it is truly remote and isolated some dogs going crazy and not my dogs this time and uh and while walking there i remember very significantly having a sense of being connected uh as as something about being in europe made me feel so much more a part of an experience like part of a place and i had a really hard time figuring out exactly what was causing that and i still struggle quite a bit to understand but when i'm in europe i certainly by and large feel a sense of connection um, that i don't feel when i'm in the united states and certainly part of that is simply personal preferences and and probably artificial feelings being inspired by who knows what things in my past um, one thing that i did think of is is just how much the united states is full of empty spaces that make so for example, I grew up in New York. Places like Seattle feel like another world. They don't feel like something you're connected to at all. If they have a natural disaster, I can't get there. There's no, there's no sense of, of being one group or one people. And when you're in Europe, it's so easy to get from place to place, often by train, not by plane. Planes work too. But because you can drive, walk, or take a, a train physically between places so easily, it really gives a sense of everyone being in a single community. And the physical size of Europe is very small, and it tends to have its population towards the center, and the fringes are fringe, but the United States tends to have its population on the fringes, and the center is empty. And whether that contributes to this or not, I don't know, but even when I'm in England, uh, if you turn on the TV, uh, the telly, and you're watching a show and they're giving the news and they're giving an update about Scotland or Northern Ireland or Wales, while those places are decently far away, not super far, but they're decently far away, there's a weird sense of 
but we're in this together. We're, we're connected in both a, we're separate from the outside, but also we're all connected on the inside. Um, and, and I just don't feel that in the United States. And I never felt that in Canada. Um, and not every place gives that feeling, but definitely when I was in Austria and it wasn't about Austria, it was about Europe as a much more as a continental whole. Um, I felt like we were um, somehow this, this sense of uh, being connected to community was just really strong for me. Fast forward, living in Nicaragua now, um, and this, this feeling happened to me long before now. It did not take three years uh, to develop this, but, but living in Nicaragua and having some time to reflect on it while driving in the car alone last night, it, it occurred to me how we perceive, or especially how I perceive, but I've talked to other people and they see it too, um, how much connection there is, how much a single community I feel when I'm in Nicaragua. Now, of course, this is a much smaller place physically and in population than most of the places I'm talking about. So it's an opportunity to, to obviously be much more connected. But when I'm doing things here, it feels like no matter where you are in the country, um, everyone stays in contact. No matter where you're talking about going, everyone knows the roads and the villages and the restaurants and the it's like we're all in this together in a way that when i'm in america and i go to a new village i i often get this sense of well no one from the neighboring villages has ever come here none of them know each other no one wants to talk to each other when you walk outside the houses are, are boarded up and closed off and and you might as well be like in a video game where a few houses in different places are real and you can go into them and you can talk to the people inside of them or you can investigate the house but most of the places are facades you can't actually go in you don't actually interact with them and that's kind of how i feel about america when you walk out your front door well if you don't know the people in those houses you might just get in your car and bypass your neighborhood and go somewhere far away and interact with a bar or a grocery store or a, a, a game shop or whatever but you're gonna have these very isolated interactions and you're not really in, in kind of a pool of community. But when I'm here in Nicaragua, I feel like uh, it, it's very different. When I walk out my door, everyone's outside, everyone talks, everyone communicates. Your community locally is all connected, but that community is connected to the community next to it. You don't have this, well, this is our community and then we, we all zip off to the city far away for work and we never interact with each other. Everyone interacts locally, and, and as you get bigger, those interactions continue. And so when we're talking about uh, a, a natural disaster that happens, if we feel an earthquake, everyone's calling each other. What did you feel? What did you feel? If there's a car accident in Chinandega or Matagalpa, everyone gets the news. Everyone checks the route. Everyone knows someone who rides that bus. All these things, it just feels very connected. We talk about places and events and things in the country in, in such a different way than we would in the United States. If we were talking about, if you live in New York and, and there's a flood in Louisiana, you feel bad about it, but you don't feel connected to it. But if you're here and there's a flood in Rivas, we immediately are like, oh no, that's us, that's, that's Nicaragua not a far off place. One of the things that I notice that's, that's very different is for example on my Instagram here I attempt to follow every restaurant, every bar, everything in Nicaragua which of course I come nowhere close to but I follow things in every city, in every departmento, in every region, every type of thing. I'm so connected to everything that's going on in the country not just major news events but little things like, oh, there's a new opening of a pharmacy in some far-flung place, or there's a, a new restaurant that just opened up. Um, they put up Christmas decorations in this park way over here. It's like the whole country operates as one community, and it really feels that way, and it feels like you can walk out the door and talk to anyone, and everyone's in this together. We're on this island of Nicaragua, which of course is not a real island, and we are floating in a sea, and, and we're all together we're all one big community no matter how far apart we actually are and it, and it and it really feels palpable and it's weird it's very hard to describe and it sounds so weird coming out as i say it for the video um, because it's, it's such a struggle to define exactly what makes this feeling the way that it is but it's an intense amount of feeling for me it is such a simply different experience emotionally and i'm really interested in those of you who have spent time here not like a holiday weekend i mean especially if you felt it on a holiday weekend certainly let me know but if you've if you've lived in nicaragua for any amount of time um is this something that you've 
sensed. Do you also feel that this this is a thing? Maybe you've never been able to art articulate. Do you also have feelings like this? Is it, get down in the comments, scroll down, and let me know. Is it like uh, Scott? You're crazy. I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, but I do. You know. Yeah, absolutely. I felt that. Or you know, no. I feel connected in the U.S. Not here. I'm sure everyone has a completely different experience, and maybe maybe mine is completely unique. And I'm, I'm really interested in everyone's take on that. I'm also very interested because I expect that the expats who come down and do the six months here and six months away or or whatever where they're here maybe for a long time and regularly but they're not absolutely living here i think that when that happens there's a really high chance not always for sure but i think there's a really high chance of losing that sense of community of never really developing it because your your mind always sees it as a temporary thing as a well this is where i am until i go back again and um, a lot of people I talk to, you know, they're maybe they're Canadians and their plan is, well, I'm going to, you know, eventually Canada is where I'm going to end up. I'm going to spend as much time in Nicaragua until then as possible. I think it makes it harder uh, to have that sense of community um, for sure. And, and probably one of the reasons that I feel it so much is because we made this, the, the decision to move to Nicaragua and this is our permanent home. When we lived in the United States, we were always talking about when we would leave. We didn't know where we were going to go for a long time, but we did know that we were going to go. That had been the plan for the majority of our lives. And so um, I'm sure that contributes to feeling disconnected because everyone else is doubling down on, on all their time they're going to spend there. And we were always trying to uh, keep things loosely connected so that it'd be easy to pack up and go, that our our uh, life was always a plan to be entrenched somewhere new in the future, and that place ended up being Nicaragua, and here we are. Uh, but And I should mention that on the morning that I'm recording this, we filed our um, medical reports uh, with the government, with the Ministry of Health for our residency. So fingers crossed that we're not sick with anything that's going to cause problems. We had to do the rather embarrassing process of leaving stool samples and giving blood work. Obviously, is not embarrassing, but having to do stool samples for that is uh, not particularly fun. For those who are wondering, children do not have to do the blood samples. I believe that's 18 and under, but I don't know for sure. My daughter is 15. She did not have to do a blood sample. So if that tells you anything, um, but the uh, uh, the stool samples are required. What's odd, he, and so apparently someone said from Madagalpa, they only had to do the blood sample. Um, here, if you're an adult, you only have to do the stool sample uh, plus the blood, but if you're a kid, you don't have to do the blood, but you have to do a urine sample. I have no idea, it's very complicated, and apparently every departmento uh, does their own thing. So who knows, your mileage will vary unless you're here in Leon, and then in theory, you'll do the same thing, but maybe it varies more granularly. You're supposed to do it in your own neighborhood, so we had to do it at the Center of Salud, uh, the Center of Health here in Sutiava, not in Leon general. So who knows, maybe it's, it's unique to there. We were quite impressed. Uh, we went there this morning, we went yesterday and had to go in and just like tell them what we wanted to do and fill out some papers so that we were ready. And then they said, okay, you come tomorrow at seven o'clock to go to the lab. We're like, we have to come back? Like, oh, it's like, seems like so much work. Like it's a two minute drive away, like it's ridiculous. And uh, so we came back this morning. So it was really easy. We went there yesterday. It was a little bit unclear what to do, but no big deal. Asked a couple people, waited a few minutes. It's probably 30 minutes. They filled out some paperwork, gave us stuff and said, come back tomorrow with these things, which we knew. And uh, so we came back this morning at seven o'clock in the morning. There were a good 80 people in line in front of us at seven o'clock. And we're like, oh no, this is gonna be terrible. It's such a tiny facility. There was like two doctors working and they literally went through an 80 person line and processed us as well in this. We were gone by eight o'clock, barely by eight o'clock, but in under an hour, it was like 57 minutes we went from an 80 person line, everyone got through and done and uh, we were able to leave. So that was nice. Then we went to Dr. Coffee and had some cappuccinos and breakfast sandwiches there uh, as a reward to the kids for um, going to the hospital this morning and doing that, which is just really boring, not, not anything else. But so that uh, that just comes up as a, you know, really strong sense of community here as we're attempting to get our residency. And of course, here I'm doing tourism stuff like this show where I'm making an effort to get out to different places and I'm trying to connect to the community in ways that I wouldn't do back in the United States because it just seems really boring to go to like, here's my hometown sandwich shop, let's show some sandwiches. Of course, it would be just as interesting to a different group of people who'd be like, what are sandwich shops like in New York? I hear they're great, let's see some, right? That would be fantastic and I really hope that I get time while in Geneseo at some point in March when we're there to get down to Ant Cookies and maybe I'll get someone to bring a camera and film me at my 
favorite sandwich shop that is still open. There are a handful of sandwich places over the years. They're just so good. New York is so amazing with subs and pizza. Those are some of the things I really miss. And I was commenting just the other day, one of the things I think that I miss most is actually the types of tomatoes and lettuce that we would get in New York. Um, we, we just, everything's different here. And uh, I think those vegetable flavors are the at the heart of why uh, other foods are not uh, as, as uh, rewarding for me as I remember. I had to move because of some of the loud sounds, but so I think that there's a there's a sense, and I think other people feel it too. But I I do think that those of us who commit and really move with the the intention of being a part of the place and avoiding enclaves, and not that any of those things are wrong, but if you're looking for that sense of a large community of really feeling like you're part of the place where you can drive anywhere in Nicaragua and instead of feeling like you're going through alien territory, just like you would in any country, and being like, what's that out the window? What's that? And feeling like this is all part of us and it's all our place. It's, it's, you really have to make that commitment, make, make yourself um, intentionally a part of a place for sure. And it's, it's, I think, important that I feel, um, just as you would expect, right, that your, your local community, your, your barrio, your city, like that starts, like you feel really connected there. And then you feel, uh, you know, naturally, organically, like, well, okay, your, your departmento or maybe your country, and you feel really connected there. And then your region and then, and then your larger region. And, and here, uh, I think being a part of, of regions within regions that are very well defined culturally and, and uh, politically, and that being part of Nicaragua, which is part of the CA4, we're in this really tight part of, of Central America, and then we're in Central America in general, and we're in the middle of Latin America, and all of that, um, I think, gives me... It's much the same feeling you get uh, when you join like a, like a really exclusive club. Um, I used to be a member of a country club in Dallas, not a super exclusive one, a very not exclusive one probably, but it was a private club and you did have to be sponsored to get in and you did have to know people and you did have to pay and you had to make this big effort to be a part of the club. And when you were there, it, there was this really good sense of belonging, like I feel here. And, and every resource, they made such a big deal. This is your place. Come here and live. Come here and feel comfortable. Come here, use things. It's not, it's not improper for you to shop here or, or want this thing or ask or talk to people. This is your place. You belong as much as anyone. And they really did this great job of driving that home. And, and it wasn't just come and hang out and be here and, and feel a sense of community, which they certainly engendered. They also had this greater club membership thing. So you, is, you join this club, but you can go to any member club all over the country. And if you go to the, one of the ones in our city, you get these benefits. And if you go to one of the ones outside of our city and these other places, you get these other benefits. And so we had this, our club, we had this level of benefits. And then if you went to the 17 in the city zone, you got this level of benefits. And then if you went to the hundreds of them around the United States, you got this level of benefits, but any one of them, you could just walk in and you had an account and you had a, a they knew who you were and you'd say, well, I'm from, this is just my card. And they'd be like, okay, how can we help you? Do you want food? Do you want drinks? Do you want a private event? Do you want, what, what can we do? How can we make you comfortable? Make this your place. And here in Nicaragua, somehow, I get this same feeling of like be getting to live in Nicaragua, even without having my residency in my hand yet. And, and for all I know, I won't. But uh, assuming I'm going to get my residency, even before that, for it's been here for three years, I feel like we have this membership in this this cool club where they're like, well, if you're here in Nicaragua, you get this level of, of like, this is your place. This is where you're based. And and it, everyone's in that we're, we're a tiny little club and we're super exclusive, but we're one of many of these little clubs. And then you, our local city clubs, that's that's the CA4. That's Honduras and El Salvador and Guatemala. You get, you get special benefits with them, not as much as Nicaragua, but you get a lot of benefits with them and you can just go and you use their stuff too. And, and you're, they're part of your thing, you just go. Like it's so, oh, you're, you're part of the thing. And then if you wanna take the, the, the big club, you go all the different places, all the different very disparate ones, but you're still super welcome. And, and it's all part of this like inclusive group and that's all of Latin America. And, and I sense some of this when going, uh, of course, when I go to Costa Rica, right? It's what if you, I think if you fly in as an American, you get this feeling of like, ah, it's a cool foreign vacation spot. But when you come from Nicaragua, it's like, yeah, I'm not from Costa Rica, but I live just over the border. And, and you know, we're kind of connected. We share, we shared history and, and people see you as part of this inclusive group, just not the Costa Rican portion of it. And, and it's really true. Like I'm, I'm really convinced that a lot of people feel that when I flew to Bolivia and was in Peru, it, 
felt in very much the same as using this private club in the US. It's like, wow, these are all places that sure, anyone can visit. You don't have to be a member of this club to be able to visit these places, but somehow being a part of it, living in Latin America, experiencing it day to day, it feels so inclusive. It feels so community driven that the, the city here in Sutiava, Nicaragua as a whole, Central America as a region, Latin America as a giant region, it feels like I'm getting to be a member of this this club and and that there's a, a real just immense feeling of, of community um, that I get from it. And, and some of it really is like watching television and the way that they present, you know, um, all of Nicaragua gets the same news. We don't get Leon news. You don't get Managua news. You don't get Granada news. You get Nicaragua news. We're all in this together. Just some of us are, are a little bit farther out or whatever. We all are interested in everything everywhere, right? We're not only about our city. And, uh, and, and when you get broader news, it's all of Latin America. That's what we're focused on. We don't get news from, I mean, we do, but we don't get this. It's not the same. Things happening throughout Latin America are, are much higher importance in the news and it's treated like it's part of our community and in ways it is right there's there's a shared cultural history there's a shared colonial history there's a shared legal and political history there's all these things that that bind us together beyond the the language or language families and uh I, i'm really this is very much a i wanted to express this feeling that i had while while driving last night and it just it just hit me how much I feel connected, how much I feel like I belong. It doesn't feel like like I, I was, you know, born here. Like I, at no point am I obviously, uh, or not obviously, you know, from somewhere else. Um, and, and, and I think it's clear that this is a very welcoming place, but beyond those things, having been here, it feels like a connection to people, a connection uh, to the country in a way that, uh, I don't know if I've, I've experienced that anywhere as much. And of course, had I moved to Spain permanently, I'm sure I would have. If I had moved to Italy permanently, there would have been some of that. But here, it's, it's extremely strong and very noticeable. So get down in those comments. Let me know what you guys have experienced here, elsewhere, what you're looking forward to. Uh, just let me know what you think of the show. A little bit different today. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe, of course. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com. That would help me a lot in making all this happen. Someone asked, and I, I just posted just before coming out here to record. They said, so do you make enough to live on as a YouTuber in Nicaragua? It's pretty funny because no. Uh, with all the camera gear I have Paul bringing right now, he is in Miami getting my cameras. Uh, just the cameras that he's bringing down are alone in that one purchase. Um, quite a noticeable bit more than my YouTube income for the year. And uh, that's fine. I'm not complaining. Uh, certainly, I love the camera gear and I would buy a lot of it if I wasn't doing the show. And some of it I don't really need for the show. If I if I needed to cut back on camera gear and was trying to make this show as, as inexpensively as possible, I, I could cut back by, by a significant amount. I do need a couple GoPros or something to be able to do it in anywhere near the fashion that we do. Not a problem. I could cut that budget uh, probably by about 90%. Um, and, and you guys wouldn't really notice, right? It would be fine. Um, so the rest of that is for me. I do other projects with those things. Like none of that's, uh, again, I, uh, one of the reasons I like doing the show is it helps excuse and fund my camera habit. And that makes me very happy. Oh, and I love making the show. This makes me happy, right? So it's all making me happy and, and it's not about the money, but there is absolutely no way that the show is making money. It doesn't quite cover the cameras and certainly does not cover the software. I need Final Cut Pro, I need motion VFX stuff and uh, all that just adds up and I'm nowhere near a point where the the camera uh, hardware and software is not more than the, the, the value of the show. Um, and uh, uh, with any travel we do, if we go out someplace, if I drive the car or to stay in a hotel, that's 100% not covered by the show. In no way is, is the show even paying for those things. And so until I don't have to pay out for the cameras uh, over the cost of the show, until I don't have to pay for all the events and, and things I do on the show, and I understand like eating food, like I have to eat food anyway. So if the show is able to cover any amount of eating food, that's kind of like making money. So that would be cool.
cool. It, as soon as it does that, I'll be making something. But until then, I'm literally losing to make the show, and that's cool. But those of you who sponsored by buying me a coffee, you're helping offset those losses and making this more possible. So I really do appreciate it significantly. Thank you. And uh, as always, like and subscribe. Consider uh, looking down below while you're answering their, you know, asking your questions or whatever. Uh, get down there and take a look at some of the other channels that we have. Um, a lot of them are here in Nicaragua, and uh, I think you might enjoy some of that content. Thank you to everybody who saw the January first episode. We did have an explosion of people uh, joining the other channels. That's been fantastic. So thank you so much. Share this on social media if you could. Post wherever it is that you are talking to people. Let them know. Share like directly in WhatsApp or, or whatever. Email someone about the show. Tell your friends and family. And as always, I will see you tomorrow where we're going to be talking about uh, bugs and mosquitoes and, and mice and stuff in your houses here in Nicaragua.